Hello and welcome to this special series, Make It Matter. And joining me today is one of the most dynamic leaders of the health insurance sector in India, Ritesh Kumar, who's the Managing Director and CEO at HDFC Ergo General Health Insurance. Thanks very much, uh, Ritesh. It's good to see a new look, Ritesh. Uh, these are <laughs> difficult times for all of us. Uh, so tell me, you're very fond of running. I'm sure you're not getting any of that in this lockdown. What's keeping you busy apart from running this big company of yours? I, I think it's very, very important for all of us uh, to stay healthy in these times, Vivek. I mean, you know, so uh, and with all these restrictions around not being able to go down and you know, I mean, you know, we all need to follow the restrictions in terms of staying at home. So what I've been doing is that I've been using the staircase. Uh, so I stay in a, a building which is a 49 story building. So about four times a week, I try and uh, I mean, you know, at least do uh, walk up and down once takes me about 35 minutes, I guess is equal to about five kilometers of running. <laughs> so. Wow. No wonder you run uh, one of the biggest health insurance companies in our country and you've only gotten bigger with a recent acquisition and we'll talk about that in just a bit. But my first question to you, COVID-19, uh, a very disturbing situation for everybody. Do you believe that uh, people have, at least now, we've been talking for years about building awareness around health insurance for people but do you believe that this crisis uh, is making people sit up and take note of the fact that they need health insurance are you seeing an uptick in policies being sold are you seeing people coming in and exploring the option to want to get themselves a health cover uh, certainly vivek i mean you know uh, i think this epidemic uh, is a stark reminder to all of us that uh, health is a very, very important aspect. And given the high costs of uh, hospitalizations, uh, I mean, you know, we need to have the financial capability uh, in case uh, we find ourselves in one of these situations. Uh, so, so we've had a, a decent start to the new year. We've, we've seen a lot of uh, interest uh, sort of on uh, uh, people inquiring uh, sort of about health insurance. So that is clearly something that we see happening. Of course, it is early days here. We are trying to find a new normal way of working, which is the, the digital way. Uh, but definitely a lot of interest, a lot of inquiries coming in online uh, for, for people wanting to take health insurance. How important uh, is it, Ritesh, to have a comprehensive health coverage. I mean, one reads a lot about these small ticket size COVID centric policies that have been launched. But, uh, you know, while COVID is something which is hitting us now and it's going to come and go. But what is the importance, according to you, of having a more comprehensive health cover uh, and getting it at the earliest that you can age wise? See, uh disease specific uh, policies protect us against a specific ailment uh, a comprehensive policy uh, is able to give us a hospitalization cover irrespective of the ailment uh, and irrespective of the situation so even things that we had not conceived of like the present covid it also gives us protection against this so, so I've always been a very, very strong votary of the fact that it is very, very important for all of us to have a good comprehensive cover uh, of an adequate uh, sum insured. And beyond that, we can go in for all these disease-specific covers uh, to, to sort of complete the booking. But a disease-specific uh, disease cover uh, only is not the solution and is clearly something that one wouldn't recommend. It's very, very important that all of us have a comprehensive health insurance policy. Mm. Ritesh, given the lockdown, uh, you know, since everyone's working from home, uh, especially in your business where, you know, you had to, to onboard a customer, perhaps go through a process uh, to do medical checks, which were in the physical domain. Uh, what are some of the challenges you faced as a health insurance company during this lockdown and how have you dealt with it? So, see, uh, COVID-19 has uh, presented very, very unique challenges. Uh, challenge number one is that, I mean, you know, most companies or most large companies have a, a good uh, business continuity plan 
sort of with them uh, but all these plans have have been challenged this time around i mean no we like to believe that we had a fairly comprehensive bcp uh, i mean no we had uh, locations which were thousands of kilometers apart uh, so from a back end servicing perspective uh, we had operations in mumbai we had operations in delhi we had operations in chennai and we always felt that uh, on account of any man made uh, situation like uh, either a fire or for that matter a local law and order situation or any act of god floods earthquake any of these situations given the vast uh, distance between each of our offices we would always have at least two uh, sort of of these offices running in the worst case at least having one of these offices running but this has been a unique situation and i mean as one reads about it uh, i mean i find that this is a problem that most organizations have faced that uh, the bcp as we had planned has all failed uh, in in addition to this uh, i mean you know, uh, as an insurance company we we have our own unique challenges our unique challenges are that in a situation like this we need to be up and running because we will see claims there was uh, there is also an uncertainty in terms of the volume of claims because there is a health situation which is going around so the uh, so i mean you know if i was to put the uh, a definition to our challenge it was how do i service our 1.5 crore policy holders without compromising on the safety and health uh, of our employees and their families uh, because you know if i call the employees to the office not only them but even their families get compromised or are under risk of being compromised so so that was really the challenge and uh, i mean you know what is uh, gratifying to see is that all our investments that we had done over the period in building up a strong digital architecture for the company and uh, this is something which has uh, held us in good stead we've had to obviously i mean you know we created a a war room we very very quickly sort of found a way that we had to operate from home there was no other way so so we moved everybody in a work from home situation uh, today we are able to have 70% of our staff uh, sort of work from home so we had to do things like move move desktops uh, uh, to houses find ways that we have a thicker bandwidth for vpns there uh, but but the fact remains that today we are able to service all our customers without any um, sort of uh, with turnaround times absolutely as per original uh, situations and 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 this is uh, i mean you know something so if we were settling a a claim for instance uh, we wake in 15 minutes a cashless claim approval we are still able to do that in 15 minutes if we are if we were doing a discharge in 15 minutes we are still able to do that of course uh, to be fair what has helped us is that the volumes have slightly come down and and this is really something which has helped us in this scenario but uh, today we have uh, i mean you know we've used this time to build up a capability that uh, i mean you know in a situation that claims and uh, other servicing requirements were uh, the normal 10000 volumes that we get uh, we, we would fully be able to operate in a work from home situation so ritesh uh, you know given your vast experience and what you just told me in terms of uh, you know managing fine of course it's been very tough it's been very difficult but if you are still being able to service over a crore customers still able to settle claims in 15 minutes as you were earlier how do you see the insurance industry the health insurance space uh, evolving going forward i mean tomorrow if the lockdown lifts and sooner than later it will uh, are there learnings from this that you will take forward as a leader even when things uh, supposedly get back to normal from a physical movement point of view and keep leveraging on the power of digital that you have you know uh, there are uh, all adverse situations give us learnings and uh, this situation is is no different in fact given the stark nature of this whole situation it has actually given us all a lot of learnings uh, one very very clear learning is that we need to continue to invest in our digital assets i mean you know this is something which has really helped us good so we really need to so one of the things which has happened vivek is that the usage of the digital assets have increased the number of people coming to us uh, sort of through these have significantly upped at this point in time in fact 
if i was to look at it from a servicing perspective uh, almost uh, uh, sort of roughly about 60% of our uh, uh, sort of uh, interactions today are all happening digitally with our customers and 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 this number was about 30% till a year back so so i think one very very important go forward is uh, how are we able to sustain this uh, because uh, in my uh, sort of view uh, i mean you know the more we go digital better would be the quality of servicing and it is really from that aspect that i mean you know today uh, i mean you know we are able to interact with hospitals digitally we are we are able to interact with um, people submitting reimbursement claims digitally in our call centers and through our portals through um, i mean you know, through chatbots everything Uh, so so that is one very very clear thing that how do we sustain this whole movement into uh, the di- the digital uh, world the second very very important learning is that today uh, a lot of organizations like ours are working 100% in a work from home situation now tomorrow uh, we uh, the lockdown gets lifted we all get back into office do we forget this experience or is there a learning that we have uh wherein can we actually sort of operate uh, partially in a work from home situation uh, and and this to my mind would be a big trend that uh, we would see across a number of industries going forward are you being able to onboard customers completely in the digital uh, domain through the digital route or uh, was that always the case we, we are so, so uh, motor customers customers we are able to fully uh, on board in a digital mode that is not a problem uh, i mean you know almost 96 97% of our policies on the motor side in any case happen uh, through that route so that's fully something which is there the health customers where uh, do not require a ppc a, a pre policy check we are able to uh, on board fully digitally uh, so which would mean that people for instance who are sort of below 45 years of age Uh, with a good health declaration we are able to seamlessly sort of bring them on board people for whom there is a medical check up required and necessarily sort of need to go through the the, the check up per se how has the claim settlement process been during this period i mean uh, you did make the point earlier that in 15 minutes you've been able to do it but have you had instances among your customers who've had to undergo covid 19 hospitalization Uh, what has the experience been the regulator has also come up with various requirements to do it speedily companies like yours have been conscious of the fact that when somebody is already suffering let's at least make sure the insurance experience is very seamless can you tell us a little about that so uh, so our our claim process has always been a digital claim process i e almost about 80% of our cashless claims come in through our portal from the hospitals uh, so so that is something which has always been the case uh, uh, vivek uh, and and uh, the the covid situation has been no different uh, so per se uh, we've had a fair share of covid claims uh, i mean we are about 10% of the total uh, uh, sort of insured population and and we've been getting almost about a, our fair share of covid claims in terms of the fact that Uh, we've been getting between 10 to 12 percent of the total COVID claims that the industry has been getting. Uh, I, I, what what we've sort of been uh, able to do thus far is that all these claims we've actually been able to authorize fairly quickly uh, within those timelines that I mentioned about. Uh, very very naturally, the regulator is very very concerned, and rightfully so, that all insurance companies should uh, should be able to ensure very very timely. Uh, authorizations of these claims and also importantly at the time of discharge uh, sort of do that seamlessly in fact they have in fact even come out with a guideline that this needs to be done in a two hour time frame uh, which is not really something that uh, as a company we are worried about because we are able to do it uh, sort of well sort of within those timelines the only concern that if you ask me that we've seen on on the side of the covid claims is that the size of these claims have very very significantly varied uh, i mean you know between one city and the other and between one patient and the other so you had claims which have been where the uh, where it has been a 75000 rupee claim uh, you even had claims wherein it has been 7 and a half lakh rupees now uh, when you see such huge variances uh, in in the ticket size of a claim 
and obviously the teams have to do a job in terms of trying to understand as to how these variations are happening uh, and in fact as an industry we've been of the view that it would actually help uh, if there is a standardization which is done uh, on this side so that the moment a claim comes in we don't have to worry in terms of some of these facts and uh, and as long as the, uh, the 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 person is our policy holder uh, we are able to just go go out and straight away now in these in the i mean you know quickest of times go out and uh, authorize the claim so uh, so so that is something that uh, as an industry we've requested the regulator and the government for ritesh you recently uh, acquired apollo munich and it's our first conversation after that acquisition when we last spoke uh, you were in the process of going through that acquisition what is the value proposition that uh, that that was a very good brand as well and had a lot of customers uh, you've been a very uh, leading private sector brand as far as uh, health insurance is concerned how is uh, how are the two coming together to add further value to customers so uh, we completed the acquisition on january 9th uh, and uh, and the situation presently is that we've applied to nclt Uh, for the merger of the two entities, i.e., the HDFC Argo General Insurance Company and uh, the HDFC Argo Health Insurance Company, which is the erstwhile Apollo Munich. Uh, the way it has, has sort of benefited is that if we were to, for instance, look at uh, the health company, uh, the health company had roughly a cashless tie-up with about five thousand hospitals at the time of the acquisition. Uh, we we uh, in our general insurance company had a tie up with 10000 plus hospitals the first thing that we've gone in and ensured very very soon um, sort of after the acquisition uh, is to ensure that today the hdfc ergo health customers the erstwhile apollo munich customers have access to all the 10000 plus hospitals uh, which hdfc ergo general had a tie up uh, which itself is i mean you know i think cashless is a very very important aspect of the Uh, of the, of our health insurance so that's one thing that we've been able to do uh, the second thing is that as, as i said that uh, uh, hdfc ergo general we are able to sort of give a authorization once the papers are in uh, in an average of 14 minutes today uh, we we've, we've undertaken that over the next 30 days uh, we will ensure that all policy holders of uh, the erstwhile apollo munich Uh, would would also be able to see their claims, their uh, authorizations for a cashless claim, getting uh, getting approved in the same timelines. So, from a servicing architecture, this would become go ahead and become a huge positive. Uh, apart from that, we've actually gone out and uh, sort of very very clearly indicated that there is no change in the policy terms and conditions. Uh, I mean, no changes in the continuity benefits, no changes in the way they interact with the company. and no changes on the renewal uh, policies or any underwriting philosophy so for for all the customers of uh, the erstwhile apollo munich it is life as usual in terms of uh, some of these things with better servicing benefits and of course uh, the combined 1.5 crore customer base of both the entities will uh, will have access to the the and and sort of larger product suite which is available of both the companies Uh, much better products a much better uh, much wider uh, sort of suite of products mm -hmm. ritesh we live in very gloomy times and you know uh, people are extremely nervous and scared about what the future will hold for them i'm sure that's the case even in your company or in your industry uh, what are you doing to keep them morale up in these times i mean both as uh, you know your own company Uh, in terms of what your company is doing for your employees uh, moreover as an industry do you see people for example continue to be retained or do you see job losses uh, if you could give us an overview of what is it that you are doing right now to keep the morale up uh, what what you're saying is uh, is is a very very important aspect i mean you know uh, in such times uh, there is always an issue with uh, morals going low we are all stuck up in our houses uh, there is a lot of bad news i mean you know the more you watch tv the more depressed you get uh, i mean you know with with all the news is around not only in india but around the world what we've done is that we've uh, tried to sort of uh, have a very very uh, 
a 360 degree engagement program with our employees uh, i mean you know whether it is uh, the the senior management sort of periodically sort of coming in and um, doing webinars with the employees uh, i mean you know whether it's uh, individual team leaders talking to their teams uh, whether it is uh, hr uh, i mean you know actually going in and calling up every individual uh, almost like a roster to ensure their well being not only their well being but also of their family and also to see whether they need any support from us being uh, being constantly there uh, in case i mean you know so for instance uh, we had a fairly clean track record in terms of uh, corona not uh, sort of impacting any of our employees uh, sort of till recently but two days back for instance uh, we had our first case uh, wherein uh, the wife of one of our employees has tested corona positive uh, or or just keeping a track in terms of all the people who are today been quarantined because somebody in their complex uh, sort of tested positive and any help that they may need uh, sort of uh, on that so so uh, so so uh, these are some of the things that we've been doing we also launched things like uh, i mean you know uh, uh, for for them to manage through this lockdown period Uh, so a lot of engagement activities were in every day there was a new activity which all the employees had to do so hr has been fairly uh, sort of engaged with the employees on that side the other thing that we've done is that we've used these uh, this time period and continue to do so to uh, take our employees up the uh, curve in terms of training so a lot of emphasis has been put in on training of employees whether, whether it is on cyber security whether it is on some of the other mandatory stuff in terms of asset liability uh, uh, and and the anti money laundering stuff but also on product knowledges we've been using this time to also do a lot of trainings for our uh, for uh, our uh, intermediaries uh, because uh, they they are they are still free uh, we've also sort of launched a very very extensive outreach program to our customers uh, wherein our sales managers Uh, i have been calling customers on a daily basis uh, i mean you know just so that they have, we are in touch with our customers uh, and 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 tell them about the company and about the uh, about the way we are trying to service them on a on a digital platform uh, so so a host of things which are happening having said that um, i think uh, uh, no matter what we do uh, it, it's not going to be sufficient uh, what i am told and what i am a firm believer of in these times is that i think the central mantra is communicate i mean you know we we need to go out and and communicate communicate and communicate with our employee base with our channel partners because i think there is really no substitute for that and that is what we are attempting to do in the way it's always a pleasure talking to you ritesh thank you very much for joining me it's difficult times but i'm sure uh, with a leader like you at the helm things will get better for your company for the industry and i wish you all the very best thank you very much thank you vivek and uh, stay safe stay healthy stay at home <laughs> bye bye yeah.